Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to part 2 of our little mini-series about how to use the replay mod. In part 1 on Monday I showed you guys how to install the replay mod, how to make sure it could have access to Optifine, and how to install FFmpeg so that you could render footage out of the replay mod. And today we're going to take a deep dive on what the replay mod can actually do, how to control the interface a little bit, and we're going to create a couple of time lapses of builds that I've already done in a creative flat world in single player. I'm going to load the world up very quickly just so I can show you exactly what it is I've done because I'm also quite happy with these builds. So this build over here on the right hand side, this quaint little medieval house is one I threw together in creative. It took about 50 minutes or so to build. I was just kind of freestyling really, but I'm really happy with how it came together. So we're going to use the replay recording of this house for today's episode. And then the second house over here, which has a little staircase and chimney and stuff like that, was added in the second recording that I took. So we'll probably save that for Friday's episode and I added this nice little path in between the two of them as well. I'm really happy with how these came together. I might actually use those elsewhere on my channel at some point, but for now, they're going to make really good material for time-lapse builds using the replay mod to its fullest potential. So now I've shown you the builds, I'm going to log out of this world and we're going to load up the replay viewer where I have these two saved as replay recordings. I logged out in between building the two of them so it could break up the replay and you'll notice They've each got a date stamp and a timestamp, so you know exactly when they were recorded. The timestamp is the start of the recording, so I started recording this around 10 minutes past 2 in the afternoon, and I've renamed both of them. Normally, it will just generate a name with a date stamp and a timestamp in it, but since you already have that information here, you can click rename and just give it a name for the sake of your own organization. It kind of helps making sure that you know exactly what you're clicking on. So we're going to load up our first time lapse here. You'll notice that the oldest replay is always the lowest one down on the list. The newest replay is always at the top. So bear that in mind if you're confused about where to find some of the footage that you've recorded. We can just hit load once that's highlighted. And the first thing we're going to do is press T and then pause the replay over here. Pressing T is actually really important when you're using the replay mod. You'll end up pressing that T key on your keyboard quite a lot because what that does is it gives you control over the mouse again instead of using the mouse to move the camera around. So with the mouse freed up you can move around the interface, you can click on stuff around here without it moving the camera and you being unable to reach any of the controls. If you want control of the camera again you just hit escape and then as you can see I'm able to move the camera around freely and I can focus on the player although right now I'm not actually building anything in the scene so uh, we'll have to wait for me to start building some stuff. And to do that I'm going to unpause the replay again and we'll get a look at where I'm building in real time. I'm not exactly sure where I started building in the scene because it's an empty creative flat world I'm not sure quite which direction I decided to go so we'll let it play for a few seconds here while I'm getting stuff out of the creative mode inventory and once I start to zero in, there we go, I've zeroed in on a spot where I think I'm about to build something. There we go, I'm pretty sure it's going to start there, and so I can place my first keyframes. Let's take a quick look at the interface before I start talking about what keyframes are though. So for a start, on the top of the interface here we have a timeline here, and that is how much time has elapsed in the scene. The replay I recorded was about 49 minutes long, 49 minutes and 30 seconds, there you go, and this timeline allows you to go through that footage and stop at any point throughout the footage. For example, if I click, let's say, 10 minutes in, we'll go with 10 minutes and 3 seconds because it seems to snap to that number. There we go, and <laughs> a lot just happened off camera, and as you can see, I'm 10 minutes into the build and I've got a sizable chunk of the walls built. It can be really useful to scrub through the footage just to see exactly where certain things happen. Next to that, we have a speed controller that can speed up or slow down exactly how fast stuff is happening when you unpause the replay and stuff is playing back in the scene. Right now, at 1.0 times speed, it's playing back in real time, but if I move this along a little bit, you'll notice that the action speeds up. And if you're not sure exactly how fast you want a time lapse to be, that can be a pretty solid benchmark to start with. If you just want it to be eight times as fast as real time, then that's a, a good place to start. You can also drag that slider the other way and have stuff happening in slow motion if you want to. I mean, right now nothing is really happening with the player character at all, but eventually once I start moving around a little bit more, once I've stopped, yet yeah, there you go, I can slow myself right down and then you've got super slow motion, like action replay style footage, which is definitely going to take a little while. If we render this out uh, 0.3 times speed, that's probably going to be like three hours long. But that's what the controls here at the top of the screen do, at least. That's the footage timeline, the speed slider, and the pause and unpause button for the replay. 
The timeline below this is where you're going to be placing your keyframes, and there are two different types of keyframes in the replay mod. There are position keyframes and time keyframes. The position keyframes control where the camera is in the scene when you're playing the scene back as it appears in the output replay mod footage, and the time keyframe controls when exactly the camera moves happen and when the footage starts and ends. So for example, if we kept the time keyframe that I've just placed, the footage would start roughly 12 minutes into the build, and so you'd be starting the video off by just seeing a half-built house already. That's not ideal, that's not exactly what we want, and I've not been particularly like cautious about where I've placed the camera keyframe here either. So what I'm going to do, as you'll see, these are both red right now. As the cursor is hovering over those keyframes, then it will turn red, and what you can do is remove the keyframes like so, and then we can wind it back to the start of the timeline. I think maybe about 20, 24 seconds in. Yep, there we go. I've started placing the first few blocks, and that's a much better place to start. Let's wind back to maybe 18. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Let's quickly hit play to make sure I know where I'm going. Fantastic. That will be a good place to start, around 20 seconds into the footage. So I'm going to place my first time keyframe there because I know I want the replay to start right at the beginning of the build when I haven't really built anything yet so that you can see every single block I place as part of the replay. I'm not entirely certain where I want the camera to be quite yet because I have no idea of the context. I want to make sure that I can see the entire wall that I'm building from a single camera perspective. So what I'm going to do is let the scene play out a little bit at a fast speed. Okay, yeah, so I was a little bit, a little bit further away than I wanted to be. Let's take a look at where the wall ends up. Okay, I've built that section. Now I should probably build a section over on the left-hand side as well. And now that I know that that's roughly the area in which the wall is going to appear, I can set a position keyframe for the camera, let's say there. And this is where it's important to note that position keyframes and time keyframes are not the same thing, because now I've placed a position keyframe there, it's not going to start the footage two minutes in, it's actually going to start it back where I placed the first time keyframe, at about 20 seconds. Now let's fast forward to about five minutes through this build. Okay, so I've built a decent amount of it and I'm starting to work on this wall over here. It looks like that's all still within the field of view of the camera, so I don't need to move the camera along. I just need to decide how long I want this footage to take. So let's say I want the first five minutes of our footage to last maybe 20 seconds in the finished video. What I'm going to do is click on the 20 second marker on this timeline. I'm going to add a time keyframe there, and that's going to allow five minutes of our recorded footage to be played back over 20 seconds of the finished video. I'm going to need to add a second position keyframe here as well, so I'll probably just rotate the camera a little bit to point more towards what I'm building down here. I'm going to add a second position keyframe because it won't let you play back the footage until you have two keyframes of each type. It needs two position keyframes and two time keyframes because it needs to know what to do with the camera and how long to do it for. So in order to play back the footage, we can move the cursor back to the first point here on the timeline. I usually click and drag that because otherwise you end up clicking on the time keyframes and you can potentially remove them by mistake. But we're going to hit play camera path from cursor position, this second play button here, and it's going to think about it for a second. And then we're going to see all of that happening as a time lapse. So the camera is making a very subtle pan to the right right now. And as you can see, the entire build is coming together in the space of about 20 seconds worth of finished footage. That's actually faster than the speed slider would allow us to go as well. So it's important to note you're not restricted by how long the speed slider takes. You can take as much or as little time as you want. Maybe I want the camera move to be a little bit more dynamic than that though. Maybe I want it to start over here and then curve around the outside of the building like this. So it ends up on this side and the player is down there right now, but we'll worry about that in a minute. I've deleted my second position keyframe. I'm going to add a new one over here. And now if I get control of the camera again and fly up, you'll notice the camera has this path indicator showing exactly where it's going to travel and in what order. So if I end up placing another position keyframe, if I put one, say, out here, for example, you'll notice the camera kind of wraps around there and it will show you the path the camera is going to travel, which right now it's going to travel all of that in uh, slow motion. So we're not going to worry too much about that. We're going to delete that position keyframe and come back to here. Here, let's play this back and see what the camera move looks like. 
Yep, as you can see, it is drifting slowly to the left and rotating as it does. It saves both the rotation and the position of the camera, so you can always make sure you are looking at the subject. All of this looks pretty good so far. I think I'm, I'm quite happy with that. The one problem now, though, is that I'm going to end up building a door at the end of the build on the right-hand side, and I'm no longer in position to do that. So what I'm going to try and do is a nifty piece of slow motion. I'm going to move the timeline on a very small amount because replay mod doesn't like you to go backwards in time and let's say i want this camera move to take i don't know four seconds i want it to be quite quick i want the camera to be able to move around to this position where the player is hanging out we're going to move the timeline along four seconds but because i've played and paused that for a very brief amount of time the next time keyframe has only actually moved on like a fraction of a second in the scene but that's going to take four seconds to do in our replay mod footage so it's going to look like the player is moving in super slow motion while the camera moves really fast getting you that kind of bullet time effect i guess where you can rotate the camera around objects faster than the camera could conceivably move in real life now let's wind that back to the beginning of the timeline and start again and you'll notice that this whole section moves about the same pace as it did before we don't really have any kind of difference here and then the player pauses the camera swooshes around to this side and we place maybe one block in the space of the time it took to make that camera move and then from here we can move on maybe another five minutes whoa okay there's a lot of stuff there now and from here 24 seconds on let's move it along another 20 seconds so we're at like 44 seconds along we'll make another smaller camera move around here so that we can take in everything that the player builds on this side and we'll add another position keyframe another time keyframe so this section here is going to be the first maybe five minutes this section here hardly takes any time at all and then this next section is going to be the next five minutes of the replay so you'll see the camera moving around as it tries to follow where the player is going to be that's the first little stretch of building over we come to the point where the camera does its move there we go moving around the player in slow motion and then fast pace resumes and that's actually quite stylish if you want to do some of your replays that way it can really add this really interesting sense of manipulation of time as you go so when i do my time lapses i don't tend to do stuff like that all that much i don't tend to manipulate time a great deal and slow things down and speed things up again what i tend to do is pick a scale and stick to it so if i have five minutes worth of footage i want it to happen over 10 seconds the next five minutes is going to take 10 seconds the five minutes after that is going to take 10 seconds and it lends a bit of consistency to the scene also helps because a lot of the time lapses i do tend to be quite long builds so i don't want to be slowing time down and speeding it up again if the build overall took like two or three hours to make because then more than likely i've got two or three hours worth of footage that i want to squeeze into a segment of maybe five minutes maximum in a video where i've got a time lapse involved but it's really up to you how you want to play with that if you want to create more cinematic stuff where players are running away from an explosion in slow motion or something like that then it's totally up to you to do that now i've ended up with a bunch of keyframes and camera moves which were fun to make but i don't really want all of them anymore i want to get rid of these and i'm going to hit t i'm going to open up the expanded menu options from down here and i'm going to click clear keyframes i normally do this by clicking around because if i hit c by accident i don't want to accidentally clear all of the stuff i've done so most of the time i will end up using this interface here there are a bunch of other options here by the way some of which we are going to cover today others we will end up covering in friday's episode so i'm going to click clear we're going to clear all the keyframes obviously it gives you a confirmation before you do that because it's uh, potentially deleting a lot of work so if we click yes you'll notice all the keyframes clear up off the timeline the camera path here is gone and we get to start from scratch so before we wind our footage back to that 20 second mark where the build begins i actually want to mess around a little bit with the camera angle and where i'm going to start the footage because remember i can set a position keyframe here before i go back and set the time keyframe so i can make camera moves based on where the build actually exists where the build actually ends up instead of having to worry about like just winging it from the build not being there at all and there's some interesting stuff you can do at this point now take note that if you open up your options and you mess with the video settings and stuff here all of this stuff applies to the replay mod footage you're looking at it doesn't necessarily have to have applied to when you were recording the replay in the first place so i was recording this entire thing with my field of view set to 80 but if i zoom in with that now if i set that to 50 
you can actually get a little bit more of a detailed look at your build. And this doesn't actually affect the recording or the replay in any way. Even if I save the replay now, I can always set different graphics options if I want to. I could even remove stuff like smooth lighting and add dynamic lights if I wanted to. And that also includes adding shaders. So if I want to start messing around with this scene, having shaders, even though I didn't build it with shaders on at the time, I can add shaders in after the fact, which allows you to not worry too much about how hard your computer is struggling with shaders. If you are setting up a bunch of camera moves and stuff in replay mode, you can add the shaders in at the end <laughs> and have the footage rendered with shaders, which means it doesn't have to process the shader stuff in real time. And it maybe balances out the load on your GPU. At the very least, it will just take as much time as it needs to, to render the footage instead of just having stuff frame rate while you're actually playing the game. So I'm going to keep these shaders on for the rest of the tutorial and it's something I would do more often in my survival guide world because I can't pause the day night cycle there like I have done in this creative world and so you can get a sense of how fast the time lapse is happening by how the shadows move and when the sun rises and when night falls and that kind of stuff. So that can really give you a sense of time passing. Unfortunately, as I said, I did pause the day-night cycle here so we don't get any of those lovely shadows moving. But once again, we can just move the camera around in the scene. We can move it back to, let's say, I think it was around 18 seconds in. As long as the build hasn't started yet, that's fine. We can add a time keyframe and then we can move it along to, let's say, once again, we'll go back to five minutes. I'm going to rotate the camera around the build like so. It's going to end up about there and we're going to make that happen over 10 seconds. So I'm going to add my position keyframe there and my time keyframe there. I also want to add a little bit of a curve to the camera path because right now, by the way, the camera path will render kind of weirdly if you're using shaders, but don't worry too much about that. If you look at the camera path, it is very straight right now and replay mode will start to smooth out curves in your camera moves once you have more than two position keyframes on the timeline. So in order to basically make it do that before it reaches that second point, I'm going to move the camera back to about here on, on this timeline so you can kind of see where the camera position is and I'm going to add another position keyframe. Let's zoom it in a little bit and let's make it about there like so. And as you'll see when we go back out here, that now takes place on a bit of a subtle curve. So if I play this back in the scene, you'll notice that, yep, we curve outwards a little bit. You get to see a little bit of a higher angle, a bit more of the roof as it's coming together. And then it swoops back down again a little bit as we start to work on the stuff around this side. So I'm going to work my way through this scene, moving in five minute increments, and each one of those is going to take 10 seconds. So I'll place one at the 20 second mark there. And once we've got to this point, I do, I don't want to move around too far because I want to make sure that the camera can still take in building the door around here. So that's actually not going to take too long. I'm going to add a position keyframe there. I'm not going to add a time keyframe because in theory, what will happen if I get the maths right, if I end up just moving it along five minutes along the timeline, 10 seconds along this timeline here, and I place a time keyframe at the end, it's all going to happen in the same amount of time as if I'd placed time keyframes all the way along because mathematically it works out that way. So let's move this along another five minutes like so, and let's see what gets built there. Okay, so we built a little bit around the back there, but what the really, the main event is back around here again. So I think what I'll do is I'll come up a little higher so that maybe you can see that back wall being built, but then I will show this section here. Let's add a position keyframe along there on that timeline and let's move that along another five minutes. So we're at 20 minutes in. Okay, great. Now this house is really coming together. There's more stuff happening on the back and sides. So I can move the camera around a little bit further. And let's move that along 10 seconds. And we'll just keep doing this until we've reached the very end of the replay footage. And if my calculations are correct, then that's going to take us to about the 1 minute 40 mark on this timeline. Okay, we finished up placing our keyframes along here. We did reach 1 minute 40 at the 49 minute mark over there. And let's see what that looks like when we play it back. Because I have a feeling a couple of these camera moves are not going to turn out quite as smooth as we wanted them to. And there's some stuff we can do about that. So this is the start of the footage. It's going to pan out a little bit. Very cool. It's going to come around the side of the building here. And yep, there we go. We can see the doorway coming into shape. So that's perfect. That's actually been timed really, really well. A little bit of bushes around the side. And then, yep, that looks like we can see a decent portion of what's happening to that wall as I build it up. Around the inside there, we can sort of see the inside wall coming together, but that's not a big detail right now. The main event really is this roof, and the roof comes together 
as the camera curves around here, that could be positioned a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is stop the timeline there and change this camera position slightly so that now we are along this section of the timeline, maybe it can come around to about here and we'll have another position keyframe there. So it might speed the camera move up a little bit, but it means we take in more of the roof as it's being built. It widens out this arc that the camera is taking. Let's move that back to about there on the timeline to give ourselves a little bit of time to catch up and we'll hit play again. And as you can see, it starts playing it from the cursor position once again. So we can just review this section of the footage and see how that looks. The camera move isn't too fast, so that's nice. The camera gets a little bit further away so we can see more of the roof. The second move is a little bit faster, but that's not a big deal. Great, okay. The rest of this is looking fine. I was a little bit concerned that we wouldn't get to see all that much of the detail that's going into some of the back there, but the main event really is that angled slope of the roof at the front, which I wanted to catch from the front of the building. So that's, yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. Now the camera is going to start to drift back around because this is the section where I start working on some detail on the back of the house. And yeah, okay, that seems to be catching up okay. That's that's good, that's good. The one I'm concerned about is the very last camera move because I wanted to catch the back of the house because that was really the last thing I built. But I also want to have the camera move around to get a full view of the front of the house because that's really where I wanted the footage to end. And yep, okay, right there it is. <laughs> the build is basically entirely going off screen. So that section there is somewhere I really want to add in a slightly wider angle. Yeah, there you see the, the camera on this path is basically going straight over the roof there like that and you're not seeing half of the build when I do that. So instead, I'll pull it out to about, let's say here, like so, and that's, once again, it's gonna speed up the camera path a little bit, but it should be okay. Let's wind that back once again. Take a look at where the camera is playing. I have slightly better feelings about this. Yep, okay, we can see more of the build in context. That's great, that's great. It pans around as I finish the back part of the house. Now, I think I have encountered a bit of a bug here where I clicked at the very end of the timeline and a replay mod did not move me right to the end of the timeline. So I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful about where I click. Okay, that looks like it's roughly the end. So we do need to move that last time keyframe and replace that to make sure that we are getting right to the very end of the build. And the lucky thing is here, we actually have a couple of seconds right at the end to work with. So I'm gonna unpause the replay here. Everything is moving at normal speed because the speed slider is still set to one. And I'm gonna make a final sweeping camera move that allows us to take in the entirety of the build in real time before the footage completely ends. And I think that's where we're going to wrap that footage up. So let me quickly take a look at that and I'll show you the difference in speed when it happens. Because obviously this section here is all happening in time-lapse form. Our camera makes its sweeping turn around the outside here. We end up looking at the front of the build and then once all of the action slows down, there we go, the player gets slowed right the way down, just floating around the scene here, and we get to take a look at the house in all its glory with those lovely shaders. Great. I'm really happy with the, how that, that came together, actually. I think that's looking pretty good. So now what we want to do is hit Render Camera Path, and we can mess around with a couple of the export settings here if we want to. The resolution of the video is going to default to whatever you play Minecraft in. So if you play Minecraft in 720p, it's going to be a, a 1280 by 720 Right now, of course, I'm playing it in 1080p. You can change the frame rate the video exports at, so you can go up as high as 120 or down as low as 10. I'm going to stick to 60 because I tend to upload in 1080p 60. We can't change the bitrate, and bitrate is basically a measure of quality in video settings. It's the default quality for encoding right now. What we can do though, if you want a higher quality, is set it to high quality there or change it to custom bitrate, and then you can set your own. I usually export at 20 just so I have a little bit of headroom when the video actually renders. If you want to change the file name that the video is going to output with, you can click on that and change it here. I don't usually mess with that because I know what all of the footage I'm using is. I'm probably going to even be editing the video the same day. You can remove name tags from the scene if you want to, so it's no longer going to say pixel riffs over my head. It's not going to have the name tag in there at all. 
And you can do a little bit of advanced stuff here that I'm not really going to mention because I don't really use it at all in my videos. You can add a little bit of anti-aliasing if you want to to make things look a little bit smoother, but that's really not going to mean all that much in the grand scheme of things. Now we're going to hit render and my computer is going to be tied up rendering this for a little while. If we hit the preview, you will see that what we're seeing is the rendered output of the footage. My player character is still moving around in the scene at super speed building this entire thing in the time lapse and if we close the preview you'll notice the t the time it's going to take drops down a little bit because it's not having to render the individual frames of it right in front of us so that is how you set up a replay mods time lapse hopefully that was easy enough for you guys to follow i'm going to hop back into the scene in a minute to show you guys a little bit more stuff before we wrap up today's video but first i think we'll wait for this to render and then i'll put the footage right there into the video to show you guys the finished product I'm pretty happy with that. I think that came together pretty well. So there's one last thing I want to cover before we go ahead and wrap up this video, and that is that you can actually remove a player from the scene entirely. If you end up opening up the advanced settings here, going to player overview, and then removing the visible tag there, and that will actually allow you to have the entire scene render with no player in the scene at all. So it looks like the house is basically building itself it's going to look a little bit weird if you're breaking blocks all over the place but i kind of like it when you see the entire house come together without a player there i don't use it all that often but it's kind of neat if you wanted to imagine the house sort of building itself in the scene or if you wanted to remove a build team who is building a larger structure that you've got a replay mod time lapse of so let's play that back without the player happening in the scene and yeah there you go as you can see a lot of this stuff as you can see the blocks are breaking here and there but the build seems to come together almost by itself, and I like the look of that. One thing to note about the replay mod footage, though, is that none of the sounds that are present as you play it back are going to be in the finished video. The finished video is going to be video output only. There is no audio attached to it. So you might want to consider, if you plan on putting the sound back into the scene as a build gets built up like this, you might want to consider maybe recording the audio from one of these playback sessions. You don't even have to have shaders on or anything like that, just to make sure that you get all of the noise from the scene. I don't do that often myself, but it's something you might want to consider if you want the sense of immersion of having the sound from the scene in there as well. So that is going to be it for part two of our little replay mod mini series. I hope you guys now have a better understanding of how the replay mod works and hopefully it's encouraged you to give it a try in your own video production ideas. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.